watch this guy Pac-Man. He's good. Pac-Man. He's Pac-Man. <laughs> I have no words for David Pacman. David Pacman does not have a soul. He doesn't have a soul. Pacman never talked to the New World Order. Pacman never got tried to get hired by the Kissinger Group because Pacman's a loser. Okay. You've got a massive YouTube channel. You're, you've got billions of views online. One awful progressive talk show host. Hello, David. Here we go. We're live. Uh, I enjoy your show. I really do. David Pacman, a left wing progressive political commentator. If I was telling my children who not to be, it's that guy. And he's a disgrace. David, you are like dripping with the viscosity of sanctimonia. Look at those eyes, man. That that's that that dude is gone, ladies and gentlemen. And I will uh, I will send you some pillows here. I would like you to try them out. And I need you need to sleep better, David. You I will try it. Energy. I do. Okay, so why do I watch David Pacman? I just that's I like this guy. That's all my point is. He's dealing in facts, and I like him. Then he went, Donald Trump. Yeah, Donald Trump. I love Donald Trump, but no more drop box. The drop boxes are just so bad. No more drop boxes. Dickinson. Logic and Sephahide. That was about a guy named, a rhino named Mitt Romney. R Mitt Romney. Real beauty. Had to give the American people their voice back by building something called Truth, Truth Central. He voted against Kate's law and he voted for Obama amnesty. As you know, we've endorsed Dr. Oz. We've endorsed JP, right? JD Mandel, and he's doing great. I've had more investigations than Jesse James, Billy the Could. Some of the world's greatest cricket players, from Suchin Tendulkar to Virat Kohli. As the great religious teacher, Swami Vive Kamanan once said. <laughs> I hope they now go and take a look at the oranges, the oranges of the uh, uh, investigation, the beginnings of that investigation. And God bless the United States. Thank you very much. He was awarded the Bronze Star and the Combat Infantry Badge for his service. We have to keep our country gay, but it's not, I mean, for some reason, it's just not great anymore. If you care about law and order, Look, law and order. In normal times, roughly 40% of fresh vegetables and about 40% China. Nambia's health system is increasingly self-sufficient. This is not about virtue, cycling and signing. And the great general and president, Ulysses S. Grant, he's done, he's really come back a long way over the last 10 years, hasn't he? We appreciate it very much, Tim Apple. When they gaze upon Yosemites, Yosemites, towering sequoias. They delivered a swift and sweeping, you know that sweeping. It was swift and it was sweeping like nobody's ever seen anything happen. Units of plasma for plasma. Donate plasma in the failing New York Times by an anomalous, really an anomalous, gutless coward. I may ask Marilyn Lockheed, uh, the leading woman's business. No teacher should ever be allowed to teach transgender to our children while out parental consent. No, nobody has to have parental consent. And we will totally oppose the Biden administration. This, this administration. Uh, he made some statements, rough statements uh, on Jewish. You, you heard them and you know them well. And they calmly walk to a seat. What? What? Bing, 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 missile launch. Okay. Bing, 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 missile launch machine.
machine boom. Which is incapable of solving even the smallest problem. We are an institute in a powerful death battle. We will put this on. It doesn't mean anything. Wow, what an introduction. Welcome, everybody. It is election night in America welcoming our viewers on the East Coast, the West Coast, everywhere in between. And of course, also over in Europe, where I know there are some people staying up late with us. We are rapidly, rapidly getting closer, quite frankly, to the end of the Republican primary. We may see tonight. It depends on the results, but we may see tr tonight Trump make it a mathematical reality for himself, that which we have known for a very long time. Let's get on with it already. As you can see at the bottom of your screen, Donald Trump has already won the state of Virginia, a projected winner because of the overwhelming margin there. 48 delegates at stake. We'll update those delegate numbers in a moment. And um, uh, at 8 p.m. in the east, 5 p.m. in the west, we'll get a bunch more numbers there. You see it. See it. Trump defeating Nikki Haley by almost a two to one margin, 62 to 35. That is a drubbing if I've ever seen one. And it is because the maggots, the Magapotamians, the Magadonians, the crow magnas. Maybe I have to think about that one. I'll workshop that one. Um, they are determined. They are determined to make Trump their nominee once again. Iowa, President Joe Biden dumping in with 90 percent of the vote, uh, 91 percent of the vote. And that one is essentially over. There is no Democratic primary. I think it's important to mention. But of some sort of academic interest is following what percentage of voters actually care enough to go out and vote uncommitted in a protest. Um, and it seems that the percentage is, is quite small. Now, let me tell you something fascinating. Uh, I will be heading to Washington, D.C. tomorrow to meet with the vice president, Kamala Harris, and I've been told I can ask about whatever I want. I am planning to discuss what is the real view here on what is happening with this uncommitted voter group. What is 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 their concern? You know, now this is a uh, this this is going to be an off the record conversation, so it's not like I'm going to come back and blab. I'm going to do what you know, journalistic integrity is when you're told something is off the record, then something is off the record. OK, but um, it is going to be, a, I, I think, very interesting to see what is going on there. And uh, as a result, I've been mentioning this. I'll mention it again. The great Brittany Page will be filling in for me on Thursday and then I'll be back on Friday. Friday, I'll tell you about my trip. Uh, we will review the State of the Union address that is forthcoming on Saturday uh, on a Thursday, rather. And uh, it's all extraordinarily explosive and, and wild, wild stuff. So uh, we have some early results. Uh, Joe Biden in Virginia, 88 percent of the vote. Marianne Williamson with eight. Does anybody know? I know that Marianne Williamson suspended her campaign, unsuspended it. Did she suspend it again or is she unsuspended right now? Does anybody know? I know she unsuspended after losing to uncommitted in Michigan. She felt I got to unsuspend. But do we know if, if she has resuspended? Nobody knows. OK. All right. Well, we'll figure that out. Super chats starting to come in. My best friends, sisters, boyfriends, brothers, girlfriend heard from this guy who knows this kid who's going with the girl who saw Hunter taking Trump votes. Right. By the way, I don't know how many people saw this, but 
Uh, I interviewed Lev Parnas on the podcast today. He's the guy who went to Ukraine and did the quid pro quo. It is a fantastic conversation. If I say so myself, I encourage you to check it out. Uh, and he said he found no evidence of any kind of wrongdoing by Joe Biden. You know, take it for what it's worth. He was only the guy on the ground there. I want to say thank you to Murray Hickey and Jason Sickmeyer for getting memberships at joinpacman.com. Uh, so great to, to see folks signing up. The coupon code is Save Democracy 24 because, quite frankly, that is what is at stake here. And uh, <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. All right, let's look at a couple of other things. Well, first of all, let's look at some of the results. I think we've really gotten most of these. So, Virginia, Trump defeating Nikki Haley by a roughly two to one margin. Uh, North Carolina, tight tight with under 1% reporting. It's basically a tie in North Carolina. In Vermont, Nikki Haley is actually winning right now with 10% of the vote. It would be amazing to see Nikki Haley win a state. She has already won D.C., but D.C. is not a state, as many of you will know. Um, and then we're uh, otherwise waiting for results, waiting for results in uh, in these other places. Uh, but an, it's going to be an interesting night and we're going to we're expecting a big dump of results at the top of the hour. So I hope you'll stay with us. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube if you so please. Let's look at a few interviews. These are very interesting interviews. You know, we've been talking about Virginia uh, and I'm going to play these clips on tomorrow's show. So you're getting a little bit of a preview. Here are some interviews that the Richmond Times dispatch did with Trump supporters. Now, I know some people pronounce it dispatch. But I don't do that in this grammatical context. I just I think it's inappropriate. I won't do it. So in the R Richmond Times dispatch, here are some of the Trump voters that use the language to try to communicate why they are supporting Donald Trump. Let's see if they're able to communicate that with any meaning. Whoops. And why are we? Oh, we're muted. Hold on. Let's unmute. Here we go. Oh, it was good. Good. I've watched 80 of them on TV. Yeah. It was excellent being here. A little bit different. Very cool. Yeah. Catching the energy of the crowd and everything like that. Yeah, good luck, man. A lot of people want selfies. I do it for for a business. And you got a good look. And so, what are some of the policies that you feel that you support? Me. <laughs> common sense. Yeah. It's common sense. It's just common sense, guys. The border thing is really bothersome. So. Yeah. That's that. yeah. It just makes perfect sense. Okay. Fix it. Yeah, they all make sense. Right. Uh, relative to what's there now. Isn't that great, guys? The it's just common sense and the border. Now, what I would love to see asked of the folks who just say the border, the border is why I support Trump. I would love to see them asked. Got it. What is it about the current policy that you don't like? And what is it Trump has promised to do? Compare and contrast border policy. I'm guessing it will be an abortive experiment. Here's another guy talking about what he likes about Trump. Great. It's great to see. I feel like uh, he's one of the bravest people I've ever met. And uh, the way he's sticking his neck out, the least I could do is show up and show us. For sure. Uh, so is this uh, so is Trump someone that you're going to support, obviously, in the um, upcoming? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No I mean, it's, it's a no brainer. <laughs> It really is a no brainer to support Donald Trump. But I think maybe I see that meaning something a little different from what this guy means. But he's true. It is a no brainer to support Trump. What are some of the policies that you feel are very important to you that uh, Trump supports? Well, for the economy in general. I mean, it's just such a common sense approach. Um, you know, when the price of energy goes up, everything goes up. It's that simple. It really is that simple. Uh, the border, of course, is, is, is uh, horrible to uh, 
is really a humanitarian crisis that needs to be addressed. And for some reason, the current administration will, will do their best. Now, I do think it's important to to um, make one point. Obviously, we see these people talk about the border, the border. They don't know what the hell's going on. They don't know what Biden's doing. They don't know what Trump would do. They have no clue what's going on. That's all true. But they've all been convinced that the border is the number one issue. And on that basis, they are choosing to vote for Donald Trump. So the point here is it doesn't actually matter. We ask them, what the hell are you talking about the border? They don't know, whatever. They can't cite anything specific. Fine. But they've succeeded at convincing these people the border is the problem and Trump will fix it. And we have to acknowledge that that in and of itself is meaningful and it's already an accomplishment for them because they don't actually have any policy to run on. Thanks to Snordsdy for the Twitch Prime subscription, your subscriber number six. If we get to 100 today, we'll open the phone lines. Uh, Asher says huge dumps coming in tonight. Make sure to flush 10 to 15 times an important, important admonishment. All right, let's go on to our next voter. This is Lillian. Spectacular. Yeah, is this the first Lots time? Lots of energy. Yes. First, first time. And would you go to another one? Definitely. Yeah. And so what are some of the policies that you feel uh, Donald Trump is, why you would vote for him? Oh, definitely the illegal immigrants. The illegal immigrants, that's why she's voting for Trump. Wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, that's the big one. Okay. And the oil. Yeah, and, and oil. And oil. Uh, we need gas. Uh, and Biden sucks. There you go. Okay. So why are you voting Trump? I'm voting for him because of his because of the illegal immigrants, because of oil, because we need gas, and because Biden sucks. Now, the U.S. has never, 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 ever. Uh, 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 drilled as much oil as we did last year ever. We drilled more oil in 2023 than any other country, and we drilled more oil in 2023 than the U.S. in any other year. But she's got to go Trump because of oil. D.C. says, uh, can you give us insight into what you plan to ask Kamala Harris? I just did uh, five minutes ago. Also love the turtleneck you wore yesterday. Do you plan on wearing it to the White House? No, 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 no. I'm just going to wear a normal suit to the White House. I feel as though the um, turtleneck could be a little edgy. I don't want to get kicked out of there. You know, here's Jamal explaining to us why he likes Trump. And I have this is because up in D.C. they like to sit there and commit a bunch of crime and get away with it. I, I said I'd like him to come down over into one of the rural areas and uh, try it nonsense. They'll be arrested quick, fast in a hurry and they won't be out of prison as quick. Are there any particular issues that are particularly important to you? Um, it's, it's about well, a couple, a few of them, actually. So the top three would be our inflation because that's out of control. I mean, now, what's funny about saying I'm going to vote for Trump because of inflation, because it's really high, is depending on the metric you look at, inflation is between two between two point eight and three point one percent. And the the ideal amount of inflation is between two and three percent. So I would love to ask every single one of these people talking about inflation. Question number one, what's inflation right now? Question number two. Where do you want to see inflation? And question number three, which Trump policies do you believe are going to lower inflation? Now, of course, Trump's tariff scheme will will bolster inflation. I don't know that they know that. I don't know that they care. Let's listen to the rest of this. I mean, the prices of everything is just ridiculous now. The um, our education system is going down the tubes. The kid that test scores are dropping like flies. And then a third thing is our immigration. We have a bunch of il um, aliens who are undocumented coming across the border with no uh, regulation. And we're just like, oh, let's just put them in the sanctuary city and they can so they can do whatever they want. All right. So, again, a passing understanding of what is even implicit in talking about immigration. But he's he drank the Kool-Aid. He has been convinced that immigration is the issue and it is indeed the reason to uh, to vote for to vote for Donald Trump. So, hey, listen, they're succeeding to some degree. Haley says, I'll be down the road if you need backup, sir. 
Oh, when I'm in D.C. Thank you. I may need it. I may need it. A thank you and welcome to Super Cyan Socialist or Cyan. Cyan. God, I don't know. Uh, you are a new member number seven today, and I very, very much appreciate that. Let's listen to one more Virginia voter talk about why he is choosing Donald Trump. All right. Can you tell me why you voted for Donald Trump today? Yeah, I, I voted really for two reasons. One is to to fix our immigration issue, which is a big problem for there it is again, the country. And secondarily, uh, we needed somebody with the competence to lower inflation. Again, I would say the same things to, to this guy. Number one, sir, what's the inflation rate right now for the last 12 months? I'd be shocked if he knows. Question number two, where would you like to see inflation if it uh, were up to you? And question three, which Trump policies would lower inflation? I don't know what this guy would say. I don't know. Across the United States uh, of America. Uh, you mentioned um, how hard it is for young young yes. people, grads, to, to, to buy houses right now. Um, what, yeah, what do you want to see done there? My wife and I there? have five children between the ages of 21 and 31. Hmm. And it's very difficult over the last few years for them to pay rent or to buy a home. And so the, the market has outpriced them, which means parents are having to help their kids, even even uh, kids that have college educated uh, backgrounds and are working in the workforce today. So we need now what's funny about that is if you want to talk about housing being unaffordable, it's Republicans who inset, insist let the market do whatever the hell it wants. It is we on the left who say, hey, we have some ideas for how to deal with housing. Number one, you've got to build way more housing because if you increase the supply dramatically, it's going to push down on pricing. Number two, we need to look at a lot of these zoning restrictions because it, it's not sexy, right? It's not as titillating as Trump on the golf course with those tight polo shirts. It's not going to excite people in the same way. But zoning is a huge part of this hedge funds and private equity buying up every vacant house or whatever that's driving up the cost, you know, all these different things. It's all stuff that Republicans don't don't care about. Uh, so anyway, I think you get the picture. It's all very, very sad. And, and uh, just, you know, I don't think we're going to convince these people, you know, so we've got to make them politically irrelevant. That's what I've been saying. And, and that's what I think we need to do. Let's look at some other super chats that are coming in. Uh, Camus says Obama. I think I've got an, an Obama here for you. Where, well, hold on. Where is it? Where's my Obama? Where did it go? I don't think I've got it. Hold on. Is it under? Oh, no. Oh, here it is. Obama. There it is. Um, let's see what else we have here. Greetings from Norway, says Takar. Even though this insanity has been going on almost nine years, I'm still frequently in disbelief over the political situation over there. But I have hope the U.S. will heal in time. I hope so, my friend. I hope so. Thanks, Seeker, for the $10 super chat. Best Friends says, hey, David, do you think the black dude wearing that shirt realizes the shirt is directed towards him? Honestly, I don't know what that guy realized. I really don't know. And JMO says, in honor of Super Tuesday, lest we forget the best Trump nickname of all, Meatball Ron. Thanks for all you do. Let's see what I've got on that. You gotta settle. You gotta settle. I did everything right and they indicted me. There we go. So we are uh, seven minutes away from a bunch of results at the top of the hour. We are also standing by in a number of different places, including uh, a room that seems to already be awaiting Donald Trump. Um, we have results from Vermont coming in, whereas it has now grown to 6% of the vote. Trump has opened up a 10 point lead over Nikki Haley. There was some hope that maybe in Vermont, Nikki Haley would be able to pull off a victory. We don't know. 6% of the vote in, there is still some time there. There is really no Democratic primary. Um, and yet, people still came out to vote for Biden to the tune of 88 to 95% depending on uh, depending on on which state we are looking at. So certainly it is going to be an interesting night and curious to hear from Donald Trump. I'm guessing we'll hear from him not too late into the night. 
Mr. Chris says my wife has maternal feelings for you. That's interesting. Um, I, I wonder how old your wife is uh, to have maternal feelings for me. Um, an interesting thing. I don't know. We'd have to look into that and, and explore further. Trump in North Carolina with about a 16 point lead and has already been projected to be the winner there. So really, Trump is um, is is cleaning up. I see that there are people on Twitch saying, when does the stream start that I'm st they're still not seeing me? I'm not there. The stream's been going on for 40 minutes, so I don't I don't know what those people are talking about. It's a very uh, it's a very interesting thing. I want to say a huge thank you to Maddie Eckerstrom, who just became a member on my website, number eight, using the coupon code Save Democracy 24. This is a big, big deal on the website. You can do monthly or yearly. This is primarily how we do what we do. You enter the coupon code Save Democracy 24, and then you just start saving money. It's a wild, wild thing. Really, really wild stuff. And I encourage people to check it out. Also want to say thank you to our great friend from Japan, Kyoko Awaya, who has just gifted a subscription that counts. If you would like a free subscription, we have a bunch available. Go now. Listen carefully. Do not email me about the subscriptions. OK, every time I do this, people write in, they go, David, I'd love a free subscription. Here's my story. Sorry, into the toilet. OK. If you want a free subscription, go to davidpackman.com slash free membership and put your name in. We we give these out every day. You've just you got to get on the list. You got to get on the list. OK, Kevin says my dad has drank the Trump Kool-Aid, unfortunately. Well, I'm very sorry to hear that, Kevin. That's I don't know what we do with that. I don't know what we do with that. Thanks to Wookie Jack for the Twitch Prime subscription. You're number 10 today, and we are just moments away from more results at the top of the hour. This is going to be uh, this is going to be some wild, wild stuff. Oh, let's and let's get updates here as far as numbers. And again, most states don't close until the top of the hour. So that's why you're not seeing a lot here. But we have in Vermont Trump plus two with 11 percent reporting. Trump has won Virginia easily. Trump is leading North Carolina by a lot, but it's only two percent reporting. And otherwise, we are uh, we're just standing by. OK, so we're going to get a lot of this data momentarily. And we're also standing by for Donald Trump. The crowd is already building. And by the way, let's see what's happening over here on Right Side Broadcasting. I have to see what they're talking about here when he didn't have anybody running against him. So to, to think that he could wrap up the nomination at a comparison to a time where he didn't have a, anybody running as a plus he has law, law, lawsuits. He's got Nikki Haley still out there doing this. So it really is something to speak of about the support of him. He was able to do it despite all of these, uh, you know. Uh, all right. So there is Marjorie Taylor Greene's boyfriend sucking up uh, very, very powerfully to Donald Trump as this all continues. Chicklet says via Super Chat. Hey, David, just voted for Joe Biden in the primary and just just convinced two people to vote against Donald Trump. Great work. That's fantastic news. I also want to say thank you to Kyoko Awaya for gifting four more memberships at joinpacman.com. And thanks to Mart Fillion for gifting one as well. Uh, folks, Take advantage of these free memberships as they come in. We can gift them davidpackmancom slash free membership because they'll be gone. They'll be gone. All right. Let's listen to a couple of voicemails here. Hey, David. Um, so I have noticed in November, December, you were saying that general election polling wasn't really you know, um, substantive, but we're in March now. It seems to be getting worse, especially that uh, New York Times Siena poll you were looking at. When is it time to worry? When now? Now is time to worry. Listen, we have to be able to hold two competing beliefs or thoughts at the same time. OK, and as we have just 
Uh, about 105 seconds left here until we get some major dumps of results. I'll, I will say this again. It can both be true that if we zoom out, presidents usually get reelected. When the economy is good the way it is now, presidents almost always get reelected. And that assuming Joe Biden doesn't make any kind of mistake between now and November, he would probably defeat Trump, especially since he already defeated Trump in 2020. And it's hard to imagine Trump really making any gains. On the other hand, when you see three different polls in March that say Trump plus five, we should be worried. Both can be true. And so what this means is. We can influence the results. We vote. And we tell people, hey, we don't want four more years of an authoritarian nightmare that will lead to a completely unrestrained Trump trying to implement Project 2025 using militarized mass deportations, military camps for migrants, right? And trying to end democracy as we know it. It is time to worry. And what the worrying should lead us to do is to make damn sure that we're going to vote. I don't know how else I can say it. I don't know how else I can say it because that's that's where we are. Uh, I want to say thank you to Tracy Faldetta and Serenity Collins for signing up on my website. Thank you. And Kyoko, an all star gifting three more free memberships to lucky people. Let's get to the latest results coming in now. Ever, Tom, not a lot of funding, not any big advertising. In fact, one of the people who said she was voting uncommitted uh, said that she heard about it on the national news, Tom. Jesse Kirsch reporting from Minneapolis, the Twin Cities for us tonight. Jesse, we appreciate it. And we are counting down to 8 p.m. and a major round of poll closings happening right now. Here we go. From NBC News, this is Decision 2024, Super Tuesday. Here are Tom Yamas and Hallie Jackson. It is officially 8 o'clock in the East, which means we have several major poll closings as we speak tonight in some of these critical Super Tuesday states, Tom. Let's start up. We have five here that we're going to be looking at. We start with the state of Massachusetts. 40 delegates at stake there. Still too early to call right now. We are also watching in this 8 o'clock hour several other states, including the state of Tennessee, 58 delegates wow. up for grabs there. Again, too early to call right now. Hallie? So the state of Oklahoma, where we know that at this moment it is still, you're about to see it, too early to call. 43 delegates at stake there. Same deal in the critical southern state of Alabama, 50 delegates at play. Wow. Still too early to call at this point. Yeah, and, and here's what else we're looking at, because 8 o'clock is going to be a critical hour. We know the states that, that former President Trump has already won. Maine that is closing now at 8 o'clock to too early to call. We're going to be watching what happens here. Could we have some Haley wins? Like, is it at all possible? Expect former President Trump to win again. Too early to call there, Hallie. We also have some of the races that we have already projected. Remember, Donald Trump projected to pick up the delegates in North Carolina, the winner there. We will see how the delegate math breaks down. Same thing in Virginia, 48 at play. Former President Trump expected to win. We're still waiting on a couple of others, Tom, or at hmm. least one more. Yeah, we're watching a lot of races, too, but we can also get a sense of what's happening tonight, right? Vermont is one of the ones that we are also watching. It closed at at 7 o'clock, 17 delegates at stake here. What's interesting about Vermont is that Nikki Haley actually went to Vermont and campaigned there, and people in Vermont were actually surprised to see a candidate there. Here's what we know so far. Delegates tonight, 865 are at stake. Donald Trump winning 71 so far. Nikki Haley, so far, zero. So wow. look at it in a different way, Tom, as far as where the landscape is for the evening, because even though it is 8 o'clock, that critical moment, still kind of early. Here you see Virginia, North Carolina, the races that we have now projected for former President Trump. Too early to call in this slew of states. And then we're looking ahead to some of these poll closings coming up in the next couple of hours here. Specifically, I want to bring your attention, California and Texas. Texas closing one hour from now. Why does that one matter? 161 delegates at play. All right, so I think we get the picture. Nothing for Nikki Haley so far, but at least keeping it close enough that they can't instantly call it. And that's something. That's something if you're Nikki Haley and you're trying to figure out some way, some way to justify staying in this thing. But she will probably be out tomorrow. I think we have to assume. I think we have to assume that she will probably be out tomorrow, although we can't say that for sure. Super chats continue coming in. Cranjus McBasketball says a great man once said, what does any of this mean? Absolutely nothing. Everybody needs to vote. 
Very well said. Camus says massive dumps. Yes, massive dumps are coming in. Massive dumps of ballots. Absolutely. I want to say a big thank you to Kyoko for gifting two more memberships. And then thanks to Terry, Pam and Juan also each gifting a membership, putting us at 27. And just a reminder, if we get to 100 today, I'll open phone lines and we will hear from some of the great people in the audience. So let's uh, let's get an update of where we are right now. As you can see, results starting to come in uh, Texas. We now have five percent of the vote in in Texas and Trump 75. Haley 20. Wow, that is MAGA world for sure. Oklahoma. What Christie versus and Haley is Trump not on the ballot in Oklahoma due to some technicality or a bit of incompetence? I don't actually remember. I have to look into that. Uh, Vermont Trump still in the lead, but it's tight. Certainly Virginia and North Carolina have indeed been called for the failed former president. Let's look at a couple of other videos. Oh, I will be going over these on the show tomorrow. Here's a North Carolina voter speaking to Shaquille Webster uh, on NBC. And this guy just telling it straight up like it is. Sorry, I mean, like he sees it. I think you're going to like this one. What do you think of Nikki Haley? Did you ever consider her? Uh, you know, what I got to say, you don't really want to put it on. Uh, Let me hear it. Well, the woman's not going to be a good president. She have no balls to scratch. She's just going to scratch her head. All the woman's good for in my book is having babies and taking care of the house. And all a woman's good for, as far as I'm concerned, is having babies and taking care of the house. There you go. A North Carolina voter has spoken. And, uh, but that's that's the old thing, you know. Uh, but I'm old school. So you never even considered her? No. Beca mainly because she's a woman. Because she's female. So, I mean, females, don't tell me wrong, females know what they're doing, but they still got to have a little bit of guidance. Uh, Trump would be the one to guide her through the. the right. What do you think How could we possibly expect a woman to be president without the guidance of someone like Donald Trump, right? I mean, that's just an. <laughs> wow. That's what we're up against. And uh, there's actually a comment here. Well, uh, let me get to that in a moment. Weaserly says I'm in the hospital. I suffer from seizures, but I made sure to catch your live stream. You do great work. Much love. Well, Weaser Weaserly, uh, best wishes, best wishes health wise. OK, take care of yourself. Seeker says, how exactly do you cure the Trump Kool-Aid? Right. When you look at these people. How long do we have to talk to them in order to convince them that they're they're, they're wrong? You know, you got to make them politically irrelevant. I know I keep saying that we have to vote in such numbers that they don't matter. That's the only way. Here's one more genius voter. This guy's in Texas. I want Joe Biden out of the White House. Do you think Donald Trump won the 2020 election or do you think he lost it? I think he won. We won. We lost due to trickery. But you believe the 2020 election was stolen? Just to yes. Be clear? Yes. Big time. Mm. Even after several years of evidence proving otherwise, you still don't believe that? Well, nothing has been proven because everything is has uh, been a cover up. So, yes, but I do believe that it was stolen. Yep. They weren't able to prove that it was stolen. Because it's all been covered up, right? And so, you know, pretty serious brain worms. I have to tell you, pretty, pretty damn serious brain worms in Massachusetts. Nikki Haley leading Donald Trump by four point seven with one percent of the vote in. Could Nikki Haley maybe sneak out with Massachusetts? We just don't know. We genuinely do not know. Let's see what's going on at the forthcoming Trump victory party in Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, and all of the court cases and break it down for us so we can have a better understanding of what's going on. But you know what, Brian, after talking to Christina and actually seeing some of these results in the court cases start to come to light, like the right. Supreme Court ruling, it's really looking good for the presidents because, yes. you know, the, the Democrats, when they start throwing all these accusations against him, they're not going by the law of the land. They're going after a, I don't like Trump. All right. So 
uh, completely ignorant stuff happening over on right side broadcasting. And uh, it's good to know it's happening, but I don't know that we need to delve too, too much into it. I want to say thanks to Mark Fillion for gifting a subscription and Michael Long for getting one for himself. This puts us at 30 for the evening and we'll open phone lines and hear from people in the audience. And if the furious Trumpists who are all over my Instagram telling me how ugly I am and everyone I know is, if you want to finally confront me and tell me how wrong I am about everything, you'll get the opportunity. If and when we open the phone lines, it would be a pleasure to hear from those people uh, from those people as well. All right. The vote continues to come in, as you can see. Joe Biden winning everything, but it, it, it all is pretty meaningless because there isn't a real primary. But also there seems to be no real appetite to go for everyone, anyone else. Uh, so it's sort of like a double edged sword in a sense. Is it is nobody voting for anybody else because there's no real primary or because there's no real interest? And most people recognize, hey, it probably makes sense to stick with Joe Biden. I don't know. You tell me. Haley from Maryland gifting five YouTube subscriptions and KJ gifting a sixth. Listen, let's count them. I don't usually count the YouTube ones, but let's count them just for kicks because here we are. Let's also listen to a couple of other uh, voicemails here. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. Here we are at Trump HQ. Let's listen. Waiting hearing from Donald Trump and among those people eagerly awaiting hearing from the former president is Lucy O'Byrne, who I just met. You're an elementary school principal from Lakeland, Florida. You drove almost four hours to be here tonight. But you're part of your reason for being here is different from, I think, some of the Trump supporters I usually talk to. You talk about almost wishing you could pray for this this former president, maybe next president right. to try to get him to change a little bit of his approach too. tell me what you would change about this man's approach. Sure. Well, one thing I totally respect him. There's one I would like for him to, um, you know, make sure he understands that there are children watching him and that I pray for him, that he'd be the role model that God has made him to be. And then imagine this being your school, your kid's school principal. Oh, my God. Goals that uh, the Lord has laid on his heart. I pray that he um, uses the gifts that God's given him. I would love the opportunity to, to sit with him and explain, you know, just what, how kids see him. A lot of them. Yeah. I'm sure Trump really wants to hear that from her. More support. Who's more delusional, this woman or Trump? Just being that role model for children. And, does the, uh, does the yeah. manner in which he doesn't choose that path weigh on you and your decision to support him and you wanting your 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 kids, your students to be able to look up to the president as a person? You know, I, I truly I pray through every decision, um, especially when I when I place that vote. I choose the best candidate and I do feel like right now that Donald Trump is the best one that we have out there and that he can protect us and he can lead us with God's help. You also told me that you were you have a hard time knowing what to believe about the legal cases against him, the criminal <laughs> cases, the civil cases. What do you mean by that? Why is that a hard thing to either? Prayer isn't revealing to her the truth about the trials that we find out the truth. Right. But we can't believe everything that's out there. Would, it, so would a jury you. verdict constitute the truth? Like, how will you make that choice? Yeah, yeah. that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, you know, I think that we have to be careful, you know, as we look through that. I'm not what she means is now if the, if it's not guilty, that would be the truth. If it's guilty, she may have to figure it out some other way. The, the first case in which he's likely to go to trial is this hush money case, right, about alleged payments to a porn star to cover up an affair. I mean, you talk about role model behavior. How do you talk about something like that with your students, with other people, if you're trying to convince them that Donald Trump needs to be president again? Like, how do you weigh that? Well, I think that we all we can look at the fact that we are all sinners. You know, <laughs> we all mess up and. How about I'm joking all over everything. That is the most bogus cop out when you finally present them with here's a specific action. That's the opposite of everything you claim to stand for. We're all sinners. We're all sinners and sinning does not disqualify you. Oh, my goodness. She runs a school, folks. Remember the fact that we are in need of a savior. And uh, a savior. but I think that Donald Trump has a lot of people behind him, a lot of. Um... 
Imagine if your kid went to a school. I hope it's like a private Christian school, right? I mean, imagine that this woman is running a public school. Oh my goodness. Amazing. If we could help him, you know, with some other little things to help uh, be that role model. I've been covering him for a long time. There's a lot of people who have felt that way over that time. Can I ask you as an educator? He's weighed in, I think, recently on two controversial issues educator. about education that I'd love your opinion on. First, the idea about, you know, defunding schools or not giving money to schools that have vaccine or mask mandates. Garrett, I've got to interrupt you, and I'm sorry to do that in the middle of your voter interview, but that's because NBC News has an election alert right now with polls closing now in 16 minutes in a couple of states. I got to get to it now because NBC News now has a projection. You see that election alert there. Former President Trump in the state of Oklahoma. We're going to pull it up there. Projected winner oh, all right. with those delegates at play. I believe there are 43 of them. We'll see if my math shakes out correctly, but you can see sure is Donald wow. Trump. Not Almost four to one. Still early, but with 76% of the vote coming in. Not a surprise for the former president taking this state with its makeup of more conservative voters there versus some of those New England states like Vermont, where Nikki Haley is hoping to compete in a more effective way. But another win for former President Trump in this Republican primary as he continues his march to the nomination. That puts us so far tonight. Tonight, again, Tuesday evening here, 99 delegates for. All right. So that's the latest. We're continuing to follow all of it, and we will presumably be hearing from Donald Trump relatively soon, I think. Barnop Q says, yo, David, I'm someone who is definitely on the right, but I enjoy hearing your perspective. Much respect. Thank you. BTG says, I hope Biden stays in his basement again like he did in 2020. All he needs to do is let Trump Trump sink himself again to win. Yeah, I got an email from someone who said, hey, you know, I uh, Trump keeps getting all this free media like always, except now all the free media is Trump usually messing up or having a cognitive glitch. So I don't know that it's going to be that useful to him, which is certainly interesting, certainly interesting. All right. We were doing a couple of voicemails. Let's let's do that. Hey, David, uh, just have a quick question. I saw your interview with Frank Huber. And it feels like he believes that anyone else but Biden will have a better shot at beating Trump. Yeah. Uh, but he thinks that you believe that uh, our best hope is Biden uh, yeah. to beat Trump. Now, I wonder uh, if you had the opportunity to choose anyone. Of not even I, I, I we've done that so many times. I'm not going to do it again. I've said if you, if there was no incumbent and it's just like, hey, pick pick a Democrat. Obviously, it wouldn't be Biden. I've talked about people I like. I've talked about Newsom and Pete Buttigieg and Stacey Abrams and Richie Torres and, you know, all these different Pete John Ossoff. But I think the incumbent president presiding over a strong economy is your best bet. Just big picture and kicking Biden out right now uh, would be chaotic. And, and I think it would be a bad thing. It would be a bad thing. All right. Let's go uh, with. Uh, a couple other voicemails as they come in. Let's see here. Uh, David Pakman, you have this Trump obsession that is uh, meant. Uh, that's Troy York. We don't play his voicemails are so pedantic and they're all three minutes long. We just don't we don't play them anymore. Um, let's see what else. If we have anything interesting as far as voicemails go, we really don't have that much relevant to tonight that I want to play. Hold on, let's see. Hey, David, I was just watching a video and remembering about all the people complaining of Trump being incontinent and just uh, soiling himself. <laughs> what is he talking about? Trump soiling himself? Now that I have not heard. I'm wondering if that's what happens during his speeches when he glitches. Oh, if that just uh, interrupts his train of thought, because you can't do two things at the same time. Wow. I don't know. Just a thought. What do you think? I have to admit it has not occurred to me and I have absolutely no evidence whatsoever, whatsoever that uh, that that's what's going on. Um, we are awaiting, I guess, hearing from Donald Trump. It's never like completely clear when we're going to hear from him. You know, it's all pretty weird. There's more uh, poll closings happening at the bottom of the hour. And we're also monitoring a feed with a number of different cameras here, people voting in different places, still daylight in California, where voters continue to vote. 
a lot of action in D.C. And of course, at Mar-a-Lago, will Trump where Trump will ultimately speak today, although I don't know the degree to which he will coherently explain his vision for America. That is uh, <laughs> that is a harder thing to imagine him doing, I, I will admit. Oh, people. Oh, hold on. Let's see what's going on here. Just obliteration. It's uh, so sad to see what's happened to our country. So we're going to turn it around and we're going to do it faster than anybody can imagine. And uh, we're going to make America great again. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We do. We've got uh, 854 delegates are up for tomorrow. So if you were to clinch this this early, this would have been on pace for what, what it was in 2020 when you didn't have anybody running against you yeah. and you didn't have all these lawsuits against you. Yeah. How does that make you feel about a party if we've come together to get you this nomination? By the way, the idea that the Republican Party is coming together when 40 percent or more of the vote is going to someone other than Trump is really funny. Last time uh, we had a good record. We had the best economy ever. We had all these fantastic things that had happened. We had the safest border ever. We had low energy prices. We had, everything was going right. We were rebuilding our military, which I completed. We finished. Uh, we did everything right. It was amazing. And now we have something to compare what we're doing against. We didn't really last time because we were doing well. We had, I said, the border was in great shape. I couldn't even talk about the border. They'd say, sir, don't talk about the border. You fixed it. Sir. And nobody wants to hear it. You know, that's the sad part. When you do something well, nobody wants <laughs> to talk about it. So I didn't talk about the border. But uh, now we look back and we see that we had a great border. We look back and we see we had a great economy. We had no inflation, essentially no inflation. Uh, everything was good, and we did such a good job. We had the greatest economy in the history of our country, probably in the history of the world. And now we have a horrible economy where inflation has hurt us probably close to 50 percent. When Remember that inflation is at 3 percent. A while ago, bacon went up four times in the last three years. I mean, four times what it was. And uh, other food products are through the roof. And, and they say that, you know, they're not going down. They may bring inflation down to 4 percent, 5 percent, what it is now. But they're not bringing down the damage that's been caused. And, and, you know, you take that, even if you get increases in salaries or whatever you may be doing, whether it's salaries or anything else, whatever, it's more than compensated for by the inflation, which is just ripping people apart. So the economy is terrible. And they say, and some real geniuses, I will tell you, some, some of the smartest people on Wall Street say, the only thing good is the stock market. And that's good because they think everybody thinks I'm going to be elected. Right. And you're I'm sure that's what it is. Yeah. You're right on that. And uh, very interesting. It's an yeah. interesting time. Well, we've talked, and you, yet you have the Biden administration trying to convince Americans that life is good, President Trump, yeah. that everything's affordable. But they know Bidenomics has destroyed it. It's been a disaster. It's a bad term. They thought it was a... There's such brazen liars. Biden liked it. He thought it was a nice name, and he started using it, and he was getting killed because it was really meant as a negative, not as a positive. And we have Maganomics, right? Maganomics. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good thing. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's so interesting. It's got to be one of the great uh, names because uh, you look through branding, whatever you want to call it, but you look throughout history. I don't think there's ever been anything like this. There has never been a movement like this, mm -hmm. possibly in any country, but there's never been a movement like this in our country. And the spirit, the love, and, and the positiveness and remember, when they hit us and they say, we're going to stop this mega stuff, mega, 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 that's <laughs> Joe Biden. And I say, Joe, what is it? Define it. And he's unable to define it. I guarantee if you ask him what does mega mean, he wouldn't know. It's make America great again. <laughs> it's sort of like when Trump is asked to define woke and he has absolutely no idea what's going on. All right, let's get an update of the numbers here. We are starting to see them come in. We will go from east to west in Maine. Donald Trump, with very little vote in, is up 12 in Vermont. With increasingly more vote in, Trump is up four. That's the closest race so far. Oh, no. Uh, Massachusetts, while still under 1% reporting, Nikki Haley is actually winning. That's the only one I'm aware of that she's even leading in right now. Trump has already won Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Oklahoma. Alabama numbers are starting to come in. Uh, almost no votes have been counted yet, so we don't even really have to pay attention to that. And in Texas, with 23 percent of the vote in Trump over Haley, 
that's going to get called any second because mathematically it is starting to get completely out of reach, completely out of reach for Nikki Haley there as well. Uh, OK, let's look at a couple of other super chats that are coming in. Best friends says Orange Shitler. OK, keeping it uh, keeping it classy. Uh, all right, I guess that's that's basically all we got there. We've got a couple other voicemails coming in. Hey, David, Oli from Dallas, um, Dallas, Texas. So um, I've been following the news coverage regarding both uh, Biden and Trump's age, and um, I'm getting a call right now. Goodness. Oh. Okay, then he called back. Hey, David, this is Oli from Dallas, Texas. Just a, I just have a simple question. Uh, why do you think that the media is paying more attention to uh, Biden's uh, cognitive glitches as opposed to Trump's cognitive glitches? And I mean, I understand that Biden's the current president, and I mean, he's only four years older than Trump. But like, I mean, we all see what Trump, you know, how he conducts himself, like when he's trying to say things, and just you know, doesn't make sense at all. So I guess. Yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm just wondering why there's more attention towards Biden than Trump, despite the fact that Trump has a much longer track record of just glitching like crazy as if he's some kind of broken PlayStation 5 game. Well, anyways, thanks for all you do, man. Yeah, uh, I think hey, there's a couple different things going on. The right wing media has successfully injected the almost like bleach the Biden um whatever into the narrative in a way that the Trump stuff really started kind of as a more underground kind of thing with independent media and others talking about it. I think that's one factor, a desire for the appearance of false balance from uh, some media outlets encourages them to talk quite a bit about the Biden stuff. Um, I think that, the, yeah, people are pointing out in the chat. MAGA also uses ableism against Biden in a very particular way. I think that's true as well. I think there's a number of different reasons here. It's a very good question. It's a very good question. Um, let's see here. Other voicemails. Hmm. Sounds like that was just a dog barking. Hey, David, Mark in New York. Quick little thought about polling. Um, I have been noticing, especially in these primaries, that the polling that was happening prior to the uh, election um, nights happened to be always a little bit higher for Trump than they end up being. Hmm. And um, makes me wonder if there's an enthusiasm kind of issue here when it comes to these polls in that people who are – more enthusiastic about their candidate will participate in the poll, um, in the pollsters, you know, questions, as opposed to someone who's less enthusiastic for the person that they will inevitably vote for. So people who are going to probably vote for Biden aren't super enthusiastic. And so they might actually just say, well, eh, I don't want to really do this poll. I don't want to get involved because they just don't really, you know, they don't have that enthusiasm in general. So that's why I feel though possibly OK, the enthusiasm gap, absolutely plausible hypothesis. Pollsters should be taking that into effect. They can often do this by having respondents rank their level of enthusiasm or certainty that they will vote. So it's a possible explanation. It's one pollsters should be able to account for, but maybe they're not. Maybe they're not. Thanks to Captain Smiles and Kathy for the Twitch Prime subscriptions. Folks, we're at 39. If you want to get phone lines opened and call in and everybody can tell me how wrong I am about everything, if we get to 100 website members and Twitch subscribers, we will do it. And of course, remember that you can sign up at joinpacman.com and you can use the coupon code that's above my head, Save Democracy 24, to get yourself a sizable discount off of the cost of a membership. Arkansas closing in about two minutes, and I'm guessing we will have results relatively quickly there. Surendra Sathapan says, hey, David, from Australia, Biden is crucial for climate change worldwide and for AUKUS as well. 
And unfortunately, Trumpism is trickling here, too. I have heard about that. And it is scary that Trumpism has reached Australia. That is wild, wild stuff. Hi, David. This is Jacob. Hope you're having a good one. Uh, my question is, I mean, I can see the writing on the walls. I've only been around for two election, presidential elections. But, uh, you know, if Trump wins, uh, he's going to lose the popular vote again, right? Probably. And then Democrats, uh, myself included, uh, are going to say this electoral college thing doesn't make much sense. Right. Uh, like we do every election. Uh, and why, like in times like right now, are Democrats not trying to fight the electoral co college system, uh, you know, when there's more leverage and it's not uh, so reactionary? I don't know. I just. Well, here's the thing. Uh, I'll, uh, uh, there's two parts to this. It is true that not enough people are involved in the fight for a national popular vote. It is also true that one possibility, a constitutional amendment is going nowhere right now because of the makeup of the House, Senate and who controls the states. So the alternative is a national popular vote interstate compact. You can look that up. They already have buy in from all of the sane states. So now to push that forward, you've got to convince a less sane state to go with a national popular vote. That's also really hard. So we're kind of we've hit a wall on national popular vote, unfortunately. All right. We are moments away from results out of Arkansas. Uh, let's see what we get there. Right here in Minnesota could wind up impacting U.S. policy. And that's something we're going to be keeping an eye on and Jesse, as the polls close. And I'll check that clock for you yeah, again, Tom. We've yeah. got just over half an hour to go here. All right. Jesse Kirsch for us reporting from Minnesota. Jeffy, uh, Jesse, we always appreciate all your reporting. Uh, it is getting close to 830 yes. on the Dow. Actually, I, I nailed that. 8, 8, 8, 8, 30, 8 30 on the mark. We've You're had just several. Like, you got a clock I can, in your I head. I can just feel it. We've had several race calls coming in, and polls have just closed in Arkansas. Yeah, significant here moments as we're looking ahead now with this NBC News election alert. We are going to start right now in the state of Arkansas where polls have closed, and wow. you see it right there. It is too early to call wow. for NBC News to project this vote, but 40 delegates in Arkansas. We're also watching the state of Tennessee that we know. Donald Trump has won 50 delegates, a lot there tonight for the former president. Hallie? So a projected winner in the state of Oklahoma, picking up 43 delegates there. And of course, in North Carolina, that key 2024 battleground where the former president is picking up some portion of those 74 delegates at play, Tom. And maybe the biggest victory so far, NBC News has projected that Donald Trump has won the state of Virginia, right. a state that's very close to him, that he hopes to win in the general election, hasn't been able to do it in 2016, hasn't been able to do it in 2020. We'll see what happens this time around. It's a lot to keep track of, but we're doing it for you here. You All right. So let's take a look at where these numbers are right now. Uh, the Washington Post has called Maine for the failed former president who happens to be a civilly liable rapist found to have defamed the woman that uh, he sexually assaulted and also to have defrauded numerous banks uh, in the state of New York. That guy has won in Maine by a uh, an almost seven to three margin in Vermont. It is tight with now more than one third of the vote counted. It's essentially tied. One point five percentage points separates Trump and Nikki Haley in Massachusetts. Trump has taken the lead. Uh, Nikki Haley was leading, but we still have fewer than one percent of votes counted. Trump has also won Virginia. North Carolina, Tennessee and Oklahoma, Alabama with uh, just under under. There's nothing. It's 300 votes, 250 votes. OK, it's not doesn't tell us anything. And with 30 percent of the vote counted in Texas, Donald Trump, 74, Nikki Haley, just shy of 21. So that one is not looking good either for Nikki Haley. We are wondering whether we will soon be hearing from Donald Trump. Let's see what's going on in uh, Trump's Mar-a-Lago. Either bury your head in the sand or you can do something about it. Diversify a portion of your savings into gold with Birch Gold Group. Gold is your hedge against inflation and Birch Gold makes it easy to own. They'll help you. All right. They're doing gold promos off mic where you can't even hear them. Uh, really, really wild stuff. Let's say a big thank you and welcome to the great Holly Barlow and Thomas Bowie or Bowie to quote Avril Lavigne on that crazy day.
Anybody remember that or am I dating myself? Thank you to Thomas and Holly. You were new members 42 and 43 uh, at joinpacman.com today. Al's room asks via super chat Canadian here. Anyone going to think Trump will get less considering his lune? Man, I don't know what the hell that means. I don't know what that means. Hmm. Big thank you to Maureen Cagnon, who has signed up at joinpacman.com and is new member number 44. Really appreciate that. And if folks uh, are interested, we, we may open up phone lines if we get to 100 new members. A couple other voicemails that are coming in here. Let's take a listen. Hey, David, Nick from Michigan. Hey, I'm curious. First time caller. Um, I'm curious about a little thought experiment. And I was thinking about the trajectory of George W. Bush. Yep. H.W. Bush, maybe during with 9-11. And I wonder what your thought is on what the current political landscape would look like if we had experienced something like Israel experienced on October 7th, right? Maybe in the last 12 to 14 months. Well, listen, um, so I guess if I believe that on a population adjusted basis, what happened in Israel would be like a terrorist attack where 30,000 people die in the U.S. In general, there's this conventional wisdom that when there is a crisis like that. The population unites around the president. And it almost guarantees reelection. You could argue it helped Bush in 2004. I don't know if it did, but the conventional wisdom. However, I don't know that that would be the case um, right now, because in this political environment, uh, I think that if there were such an attack, MAGA and Republicans would just spend a year, however long, blaming Biden and saying Biden is responsible. Um, and I think that it would end up being a, a sort of different scenario. So I don't know. I don't know what would happen. Thank you to Rubin, your rhubarb, who's a Twitch viewer who just grabbed a Twitch Prime subscription. And a big thank you to Edward Held. Edward is new member number 46 today. Remember that our primary source of funding on this show is the membership program. You can sign up at joinpacman.com. There are great perks. We are weeks from the go live on the new website. When the new website launches, the prices for membership go up. But if you lock in the current rates, you keep them for as long as you want. So a great opportunity to sign up at joinpacman.com and you can use the coupon code above my head. Save democracy 24 for a sizable discount. Uh, let's listen to um, a couple of other voicemails here as we await. Uh, oh, hold on. Let's listen to Jason Miller here going up and up. It's not as though people are unaware that he has the attacks coming at him from Joe Biden. But right now, voters are so angry and so upset by what they're seeing from Joe Biden. They want the old policies back. They wanted the cheap gas. They wanted the uh, lower inflation rate. They wanted to have a secure southern border. And that's where the importance is. And I'd also point out that the you know very strong plurality of vote uh, in poll after poll shows that people do think the politics are at play here with all of these uh, legal attacks. Jason, I hear you and I hear you echo the former president uh, when it comes to the concern as you lay out that you feel like the Biden administration is weaponizing the levers of government against you. The Supreme Court, as you know, has just ruled giving the former president a win. So does that not stretch the bounds of common sense to suggest that things are stacked up against the former president when he actually in some ways has the wind at his back for now? Well, we're very happy with the way the Supreme Court ruled. It would have been absolute chaos in the country. And, you know, there's a point here, Hallie, that I want to make that it's Joe Biden's not just trying to weaponize the justice system. He's also trying to weaponize all facets of government, including our elections. That's just wrong. That's why President Trump, when the news came out yesterday. This guy's pathetic. All right, let's get to a voicemail. Hey, David. Uh, my name is Ty. I'm from Alabama, and I just had one question for, for you. Um, I was wondering if you thought that states that are generally uh, considered solid red states, such as Alabama, might lean more blue or at least uh, mixed purple if the gerrymandering wasn't so severe and uh, districts weren't sectioned off into predominantly minority areas versus a majority of districts sectioned off into majority white Republican areas. 
Uh, I was hoping you could touch on this. Thanks, David. Well, remember, gerrymandering only hey. matters for the House of Representatives because for the Senate, it's the popular vote of the entire state. And when it comes to the presidency, it's the entire state voting. So there's no doubt that there are red states that at a congressional district level, meaning House of Representatives wouldn't be as red if it weren't for gerrymandering. It, it's probably true of some blue states as well. But when it comes to the Senate and certainly the presidency, uh, it doesn't make a difference because of how that is uh, how that is organized. Bay Photo asks via Super Chat. Is Trump going to speak from the stage? that was used to store classified documents. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I guess he's not going to be in the bathroom speaking from the bathroom where he was storing the classified documents, but I don't know where he plans to speak from, quite frankly. Uh, RAR and Zedgy have grabbed Twitch Prime subscriptions, putting us at 48, which I very much appreciate. I am a robotic, says Spanish speakers calling VP Gemala. Imagine if they pronounced her name correctly. I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that, but I believe you. I believe you. Thanks to Davis Cover for signing up on my website. New member number 49. Let's get an update of the uh, votes. We now have a situation where with 38 percent of the vote, Nikki Haley has a bona fide lead. She has taken a very small lead, 0 0.6 percent in Vermont. And that is very, very interesting. In Massachusetts, we still have Donald Trump leading by five. These are Nikki Haley's two best states. And of course, Trump so far has won Maine, Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee and Oklahoma in Alabama with very little vote count so far. Trump's winning by a lot, but we'll see where that goes in Arkansas with very little vote counted. Trump is winning. And in Texas, with now a third of the vote, Trump's winning basically four to one, which is incredible. So we may uh, we may very, very soon see that called in terms of the Democratic side. Look at these numbers. Joe Biden winning Alabama right now, plus 84 and winning Arkansas plus 90. Biden won Iowa with an 87 point margin. Uh, one Massachusetts, currently a 54 point margin, but only 2% counted. One Maine with an 84 point margin. One North Carolina with an 80% margin. Oklahoma with a 66% margin. Tennessee with a blistering 93% margin. And Virginia and Vermont with uh, mid 80s, low to mid 80s margin, respectively, which are uh, quite no interesting numbers. I mean, there's really no primary, but also there were movements motivated, I guess you would say, to come out and vote against uh, Joe Biden. So interesting stuff all around. Let's listen to a little bit more of this interview that Trump gave just hours before today's elections to right side broadcasting. He's a deranged person and look at his record. He's been overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court unanimously. These people are bad people. They were set out to do a number on me to damage me so that Biden could beat me, because that's the only way he could beat anybody, because he's damaged. I mean, he's really damaged goods. And you know what he should do? He, they're all his prosecutors. Uh, they work for him, like Fawny and her Fawny. lover Fawny. went to Washington and spent at least two days that they know of, eight-hour days in the White House uh, counsel's office or the DOJ. So they were working on this a long time in conjunction with Joe Biden's White House. Hmm. Uh, the uh, DA's office has one of the top people. These are very shaky allegations. And that's Washington. In other words, Merritt Garland's people put their top person in the DA's office to handle this case. And it's a, non it's a nonsense case. You know, every legal opinion I've read said it's not even a crime. It's not a crime. It's not this. It's not that. It should never be brought. Should have never been. None of these things should have been brought. But it's all being all of these indictments are Biden indictments and they're there to hurt. Remember, there's no evidence any of the indictments are Biden indictments. What does that even mean? I would say it probably wouldn't happen. But all of this was done to inflict harm on his political opponent. And we've never had that in this country. It's something that's quite well known. But uh, it's in other countries, not in this country. This is a big example. And honestly, what he should do is take all of those prosecutors off the cases and fight a really fair fight. 
We're going to win anyway, one way or the other. We're going to win anyway. But they should fight it fair, because it's so bad for, for the country. And people know what's happening. They see it. If they didn't see it, I'd be down at nothing. I'd be absolutely nothing. They get it, and they see weaponization. It's an attack on a political opponent. Using the FBI and the DOJ, they raided Mar-a-Lago. That's against Fourth Amendment. I mean, they raided my house. It's not against the Fourth Amendment when they have every I crossed and T dotted, as Sean Hannity likes to say. The thing I can say is that we had it going so good in the four years that I was there that people were calling on the left, very strong, I would say the radical left, and they wanted to get together because African-Americans, Hispanic-Americans, everybody was doing better than they've ever done before. And all of a sudden, everything was coming together. Mm -hmm. And tremendous things happened, tremendous things and tremendous success. And now when you look at what's going on, like uh, the border. All right. Anyway, continuing the same word salad of grievances that we've seen many, many times. I want to say thank you to some really great people. Jacob Kimmerer. Brian Lane, Cody Camacho and Janetta Nixon, all of whom got memberships on my website. I appreciate that. And then a big thank you to two people gifting memberships, Edward Ellenberg and Lisa Rader. Remember that you can uh, uh, claim one of these free memberships by going to davidpackmancom slash free membership. Don't email me. Don't send me a letter. No smoke signal or any of that. Just go to davidpackmancom slash free membership if you'd like to claim one of those. Let's hear from a couple other people who left voicemails here. Why do people keep supporting the liberals that they're going to keep nominating people like Joe Biden? Uh, old, rich people, just like the, 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 the Republicans, man. It's all the same. Yeah, I mean, I don't really think so. Remember, Bernie Sanders is a millionaire, much to the chagrin of many people. But Bernie Sanders has a policy package and political perspective that would materially improve the lives of tens of millions of Americans. The other thing is that Biden isn't rich in the way that Trump is rich. And I know I mean, listen, we know Trump's not as rich as he says he is either. Right. But Trump's probably a billionaire, I think. Right. I don't think he has four or five, six billion. It's all based on made up numbers about his properties. But Trump's probably a billionaire or certainly Trump has hundreds of millions of dollars. Maybe soon he'll be broke. We'll see. Biden's my understanding is he's worth 11 million bucks. And it's mostly from books that he's written. Uh, and again, this is not about pretending Biden's poor. If so, let's see, how can I explain this? Ugh, some people aren't going to like the millionaire rant. Should I do it anyway or do or are people going to get upset? I don't know if I should do it. I should. OK. I don't know. Listen, here's the deal. Biden, Bernie. If you make six figures for decades, you should be a billionaire by the time you're seven. I'm sure. You should be a millionaire by the time you're 75. It's just. It just is what it is. OK, go and look at the math. If you make a hundred thousand, one hundred and fifty thousand, two hundred thousand bucks for decades and you're not terrible with money, meaning you're saving 15, 20, maybe 25 percent. You know, I know uh, I, I've talked about savings rates before in my savings rate, but being being just more conservative, you should be able to save 15, 20 percent of your income at that level. If you do that for 30 years and the stock market returns 7% and you own a house and the house appreciates, you maybe get maybe get an inheritance by that point in your life, maybe not. And then you get paid a few million bucks because you write a book and the book sells well, which is how Bernie made a bunch of his money and how Biden made a bunch of his money. You're going to be a millionaire. You're, you're doing something wrong if you have the six figure salary for 30 years and you're not a millionaire by the time you're 80. So to say that it's the same as Trump, who's worth, you know, fill in the blank, right? Several hundred million dollars, a billion or two, if we believe he's a billionaire, but not four five or six. It just kind of is what it is. And it is a completely different scenario. I can assure you 
that the difference between, you know, Bernie being worth a million and a half, Biden 11 and Trump a billion, completely different scenario. But what we care about is what are they proposing? And when you look at what Biden's done, it has helped millions of everyday Americans. When you look at what Bernie would have done, despite being a millionaire, would have helped tens of millions of Americans. That's what I care about. That's what I care about. All right. Other super chats coming in. Let's see what we've got here. A fire star asks, when was America great? You know, I don't find those sorts of questions. You know, I know that when Republic Republicans talk about make America great again, they sort of seem to wax poetic for the 1950s. Um, I think that we can find times in American history where major progressive progress was made. The progressive era, 1890 to the 1915 ish era, 1920, um, the New Deal era, civil rights era, where we made significant progress. This binary of America being great or not, it's a country that is great for certain groups of people and for people in certain ways. And it's a country that leaves a lot to be desired because it could also be so much better. That that's kind of the way I would say it. Uh, let's see. Martin says if Trump can't be blamed for covid because it's a global thing, why can Biden be blamed for inflation, which is also global? They can't have it both ways. Yes, they can. They have it both ways all the time. That this is what they do. They just they love having it both ways. They don't care. They're hypocrites. Consistency doesn't matter anymore to these folks. I, I wish I wish I had a different answer. Thanks to Michael Asante for signing up at joinpacman.com. You are new member number 56 today. Really appreciate that. Uh, let's go to another voicemail here. Hmm. I guess that's someone singing into the microphone. I don't know, though, into their phone. That was weird. Uh, OK, Music Addict sends a super chat. Sir, if Trump wins and none of his trials go before he's sworn in, can he just drop the charges or pardon himself when he ends up getting convicted? Well, remember, that would only work for federal charges, federal charges, not state. So I say we take it a step at a time. Let's get an update as to where these numbers are. Trump has now uh, won Massachusetts. It looked like Nikki Haley was competing there, but it is it is not to be Trump. Uh, Massachusetts has been called Trump won Maine. Nikki Haley still holding just by zero point one percent of the vote in Vermont. Wow. That is a very small margin. Trump also winning Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee, Alabama and Oklahoma. Trump winning Hugely in Texas, 75 to 20, 36 percent of the vote is in. Um, I think that's going to be called any moment. And then in Arkansas, it has not been called yet. It will be called any moment. Trump winning 70 to 24 with 10 percent of the vote in. So a lot, a lot, a lot going on there. Very quickly, delegates coming in for Trump. TK says with a cleared mind. Then imagining of 100 penguin using rollerblade jumping over the single fence one by one. This method can relieve a stress and tense. Well, that's very interesting, TK. Uh, I'm thinking about it right now. It is it is quite uh, quite relaxing. Let's hear another voicemail. I'm right behind. Look behind you. I'm Nikki Haley coming for you. Hmm. Very weird. Here's the official announcement for Trump in Alabama. He has done very well in that state going back to 2016. You can see he got 90 percent of the vote. We still have some vote out there, but a big number for him. 865 delegates at stake. We always want to remind you guys at home that there's one third of all the voting in the primaries is tonight. Donald Trump, look at that number. 
Allie, 191 delegates so far versus Nikki Haley's three. I know wow. you remember this, Tom, because you yeah. covered former President Trump back in the days of 2015-2016. Wow. Um, and Alabama was one of the first places where he filled a stadium. You remember right. that on the campaign trail? It's a state that has loved him yeah. from the start. And I'm smiling because you remember why he went there. Senator Jeff Sessions, one of his first endorsements, mm. long relationship. It was immigration that brought those two together. And then he got into uh, the White House, and that relationship quickly ended. Yeah, that's right. After uh, he became Attorney General. In the, in the Justice Department yeah. there. Um, a significant... Here's an interesting super chat as we await more poll closings at the top of the hour, just seven minutes away. Jake says, what do you think about general election Biden voters who vote for Nikki Haley in the primary in states with an open primary? You know, I am not big personally on that sort of like send a message strategic voting sort of thing. I think of the people that are in this thing right now, Biden's the best choice. And so that's my vote. And I know that other people have all these other things. Well, what if I switch my registration to Republican in a state with closed primaries and then vote for Nikki to send one message? Or what if I vote in the Republican primary in a state with open primaries, but then vote Democrat or I'm it's just it's not for me. I'm not criticizing it in any way. I just for me, it's just much more straightforward. I want to be coherent. Here's who I think is the best option, the least bad option, whatever. I will publicly tell you that's who I'm voting for. I will privately vote for that person. And that's it. It's just simpler and, and fewer calculations. And meanwhile, I would love to have a different system like rank choice, single transferable vote, et cetera, so that more people could vote for who they really want to see win without concern for am I helping the worst person win? Uh, that's that's really the way I see it. Jordan asks, what important impacts do you think Taylor Swift has made for Biden, especially in Tennessee? I, I couldn't say that she's made any impact yet. But I've done a number of segments about the numbers around which maybe you could make the case that uh, indeed Taylor Swift could could flip maybe some state for Biden. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, getting people registered and telling them to vote is a great thing. Mad Satchel says what percentage of Haley voters would have to vote for Trump for him to have a real chance at beating Biden? How many of her voters will stay home? I don't know. That's a ma it's, a, it's an empirical question. I don't know the answer. It probably depends on the state because her percentage of voters are di is different in each state and the expected margins would be different as well. Captain N and Izzel says, when did the timeline split and how do we get out of this shoddily written reality TV trash fest known as American politics? If anybody gets the answer to that question, please let me know because I would love to know it. Carl says, I voted like that in Texas today in an open primary, but it was more because of the local racist and who Abbott is trying to primary. Well, there you go. There is a another perspective on that. Let's listen to a couple other voicemails here. Uh, Mr. Packman, I uh, started watching your show a couple months. Very impressed. I'm a 71 year old uh, proud liberal. Thank you. Anyhow, uh, would you do me a favor? Would you show the number of total votes for Haiti, total votes for Trump? I have tried to look on Google. I can't get it. I can't to do it state by state. I guess it's past the point where I can do that. Hmm. But I think you can see something really interesting. You see, you'll see like maybe like 900,000 to 400,000, something similar to that. You know, if she can just do, if, if she can pull in, the 20 percent the figure they're looking for, even a 10 percent, she can, she has something to say. She can walk into the uh, convention with at least 10 percent and have something to say. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm not easily finding those numbers right now. But those are certainly interesting numbers to consider in terms of total votes. That is very interesting. I, I'm going to try to find that information. Uh, let's see what else we got. Hi, David. I was just calling to get your take on why the hell Jessica Tarlow is still on Fox News, even though they consistently talk over her and embarrass her. Yeah. Uh, I think they like having her on there as the left wing foil, 
but she often does really well at foiling for right wingers. So I like her presence there. We've talked about Jessica Tarlov before. Samir Khatib says, what are the chances Haley ultimately continues running as an independent to be a spoiler and help Biden win? Uh, I don't think there's any chance Nikki Haley runs as an independent. I just I just don't think so. Um, let's see what else we got here. David B, man, how you doing, man? It's Larry Lorenzo, Brooktown, New Jersey, man. Forget about it, man. Come on, man. Why you gotta start so late? Forty-five minutes in the Super Tuesday, man. You big time late. Come on, man. What happened to the work ethic? We all know, we all love David P, man. Come on, forget about it. You got it wrong with the inflation, man. It might be a three percent now, but man, man, eight nine percent too much, man. It's too much for the people, man. You gotta tell the folks at home, man. You gotta take it easy. Yeah. Right, anyway, Cody says, "Sir, can you say hello to my brother Noah Camacho, who is watching in Japan right now? Hi, Noah, and my cousin Mason Esquida." in San Diego. Keep up the great work. Hey, Mason, glad to do it. Uh, great to hear from you guys. Great to see you guys as we are awaiting some additional results here. Let's see what else we got here. No, seriously, David, I was trolling earlier with the singing and, sh and stuff, but you have to pick one. John King on the big board or Steve Kornacki? Who do you prefer on the big board? And also, do you prefer, like, what news media do you prefer? CNN? MSNBC. Yeah, I really don't care. John King or Steve Kornacki on the big board doesn't really make a difference. I don't really watch cable news. The The only cable news I watch is stuff I use clips to prep for the show. And when I do a live stream like this, we'll watch some cable news. But otherwise, there's there's I'm just not watching. We are 25 seconds from more poll closings. Let's listen. Tom, as you know, these folks yeah. are just tireless on that front. It is almost nine o'clock, Hallie. And as we look at these two boards, they tell the entire night, right? Yep. The story of tonight, 438 total delegates so far. He needs 1215 to take the nomination. Just tonight in Super Tuesday, Donald Trump winning 191 delegates. Nikki Haley only with three. And there's 865 delegates up for grabs. One third of all the voting tonight. Which is a ton. And yeah. you have more than 130 million people living in these states that are casting ballots but let me just remind people 12 15 can't get it right he's not gonna yeah. clinch the nomination tonight even if he were to get every single delegate Tom so we yeah. are counting down to those poll closings happening right now Wow from NBC News this is decision 2024 Super Tuesday here are Tom Yamas and Hallie Jackson. It is nine o'clock in the East, which means polls are closed in three more states, including one of the big prizes of the night, Tom. Oh, and there's that election alert. We have a very big one. NBC News can now project that former President Trump has won the state of Texas, 161 delegates Expected. up for grabs in the Lone Star State, with about 43% of the vote in. So a lot of the vote in right now, Donald Trump with 75% of the vote right there. We are also watching another state tonight. Colorado, still too early to call. The polls, though, have closed in that mountainous state right now. Minnesota is an interesting one here, too. In the last competitive Republican primary, it is too early to call tonight, but it is not a state Donald Trump won previously. You've also got Alabama, which we have called Donald Trump the projected winner with 50 delegates in play there. Speaking of states that Trump has won tonight, Tennessee, and it's 58 delegates there. Donald Trump winning there with 72% of the vote. Also another big state he's won, Oklahoma. Again, this was the first one NBC News can project that he's also won the state of Oklahoma as well. Our first call of the night, of course, was Virginia the form All right so getting an update as to where we are right now not a ton has changed with those closings many of those closings considered too close to call but Texas is now starting to be called starting to be called for Donald Trump on some networks Trump has also now taken a lead in Vermont which it Nikki Haley was leading for a little bit but it now also seems as though Donald Trump is ultimately I mean, listen, if it's like every other state, Trump's ultimately going to win it. But we are still following it. We are now one hour, one hour from the forthcoming closings. Let's listen to a little bit of this interview. Folks are coming in the vibe. How's it feel? No, they all great. It's a live, it's a live feed. Everybody's excited. They all winning. 
Yep. They always told us we never make it to Mar Largo, and look at us here. You are doing great things. We're so proud of you. I'm going to show off your tattoos. In case you missed it when we showed off these tattoos at CPAC, MAGA tattoos. I love it. MAGA, baby. MAGA. MAGA, it's a movement. That's yeah. all we're trying to do. Wake up the people, wake up the youth. Let's say, talk about how the chants of USA behind us. We're going to let you listen in real quick. Wow. Truly inspiring. People here are excited at Mar-a-Lago. Let's talk about your music. What's new that's out right now? How can people find it? You can um, get it on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, all over the social media. Our new song, American First, Godland, with Hadas, featuring yeah. Trump Latinos. One it's man, everywhere. It's all on there. All right, make sure you download it. Let's talk I about it. I got a brand new song out, too. Trump is your president. It came out last Thursday. I need everybody to go get it. Support Trump Latino. Support for Giotto Blow. I wasn't going to forget about you. I was getting to you next. No, but I was like, you know, I got a song out. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so uh, listen here. Those are the results that we have. It is an hour until the next poll closings. Normally, I would just hang around, but I am flying to D.C. tomorrow for this incredible meeting with the VP and some other independent media folks. Uh, and so I got a big day. And so we're, that is going to conclude my coverage tomorrow. I will tape the show first thing in the morning. We will have all of the results from tonight for you. Then I will head to D.C. and it will all happen. Brittany Page will be filling in for me on Thursday and then I'm going to be back Friday. We will review the State of the Union. We'll review my trip and the entire thing. So Trump will probably win everything. Maybe Nikki Haley. Uh, Wins Vermont. I don't know. Probably not, though. Probably not. And uh, appreciate everybody who joined me. We will have the show tomorrow and then so many other things. See everybody very, very soon.